Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to talk about the sponsor for this video, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is a service that takes the hassle out of trying to offload your extra cards. They provide top buy list value for your cards without all the extra effort of traditional buy listing. The service is quick and easy. Simply send them your unsorted cards, and then Card Conduit will sort, grade, and find the best buy list price for each of your cards. They are fully transparent, giving you a detailed report of exactly what you sent and what they are paying you for each card. You can also see exactly what you'll get for your cards ahead of time by going to their price check tool on their website. Their fees are reasonable and their customer service is fantastic. They process quickly and submit their payments super fast. I personally used Card Conduit twice before they ever became a sponsor. They were amazing, guiding me through the process and clarifying any questions or hesitations that I had. I got a fair price for my cards and they literally saved me dozens of hours in the process. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. So give Card Conduit a try today. I will be using them for all of my extra cards from now on and I recommend that you do the same. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ian, piloting Selvala Twiddlestorm. This deck seeks to assemble one of many infinite mana combos in order to win the game with its commander. Ian's opening hand contained an Elvish Mystic, Weird Harvest, Ranger Captain of Eos, Priest of Titania, Tooth and Nail, Bountiful Promenade, and his London Mulligan is an Uba Mask. Next, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Paco, Arcane Retriever, and Halden, Avid Arcanist. This deck seeks to leverage its commanders for massive card advantage before winning the game with one of several combos. Zack's opening hand contains a Flusterstorm, Crop Rotation, City of Brass, Windswept Teeth, and his three London Mulligans are Island, Seasons Past, and Misdirection. After that, we have Shu, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovic's Opus. This deck seeks to grind advantage through its commanders, play all of the best cards available in the format, and win the game through a combo. Shu's opening hand contains an Imperial Seal, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Ancient Tomb, Spire of Industry, Morphic Pool, and his London Mulligan is a Diabolic Intent. Finally, we have Jordan piloting Halar, the Fire Fletcher. This deck whittles down its opponent's life totals with its commander and kicker spells before winning the game with a combo. Jordan's opening hand contains a Karametra's Acolyte, Sylvan Tutor, Teemer Sabretooth, Carpet of Flowers, Sidonul Wood Readers, Boseju Who Endures, and a Forest. Ian had the best insult for the Pittsburgh Steelers and gets to start us off. Ian draws a card for turn and plays a Bountiful Promenade. He casts Elvish Mystic. He ends the turn. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a City of Brass. He passes. Shu draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Mox Opal. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Imperial Seal. In response, Zack taps his City of Brass to help cast Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Imperial Seal. Seal is countered and the turn moves to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays a Forest. He casts Sylvan Tutor. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. Jordan then ships the turn. Ian draws and plays a Horizon Canopy. He taps his Horizon Canopy to help cast his commander, Selvala, Explorer Returned. He sends the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. Staring at his hand in frustration, he passes. During his upkeep, Shu wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb and Spire of Industry to help cast his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Krom. Zack takes it, and Shu ends the turn. Jordan draws and plays a Besiege who endures. The turn moves to Ian. Ian draws and activates Selvala, Explorer Returned. Ian reveals Finehorn Elves, Zack reveals Resculpt, Shu reveals a Badlands, and Jordan reveals an Endurance. Ian adds three green and gains three life. Then each player draws. Ian plays an Arid Mesa. He taps his Horizon Canopy to help cast Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and he fetches up a Wirewood Symbiote into his hand. He casts Wirewood Symbiote. Krom triggers, and Shu draws. Ian taps Elvish Mystic for a green, then activates Wirewood Symbiote, returning Elvish Mystic to his hand and untapping Zelvala. He activates Zelvala, and players reveal Gaia's Cradle, Chrome Mox, Mistcast, and Beast Within. Ian adds three green and gains three life. Then each player draws. He casts Finehorn Elves. He casts Elvish Mystic. He casts Priest of Titania. He ends the turn. At the end of Ian's turn, Zack cracks his Windswept Teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield tapped. Zack draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Breeding Pool as an additional cost. He fetches up an Ancient Tomb onto the battlefield. He casts Chrome Mox. Chrome triggers and Shu draws. Chrome Mox enters and Zack imprints Finehorn Elves. He taps the City of Brass and Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. He moves to combat and attacks Shu with Paco. Paco triggers, exiling Intuition, Professional Facebreaker, Deflecting Swat, and Savannah with fetch counters on them. Paco then gains 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Shu takes it and Zack ends his turn. 
At the end of Zack's turn, Ian activates Wirewood Symbiote, returning Finehorn Elves to his hand and untapping Salvala. He activates Salvala, revealing Congregation at Dawn, Wild Growth, Ad Nauseum, and Stomping Ground. Ian adds 3 green and gains 3 life, then everybody draws. Still in the end step, Ian cracks Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Temple Garden onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He then casts Congregation at Dawn. He fetches up an Enmeal the Blessed, Allosaurus Shepherd, and Mirror Entity onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Shu. During his upkeep, Shu loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Badlands. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. Dragon's Rage Channeler triggers and he surveils a Talisman of Progress into his graveyard. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Jordan. He ends his turn. At the end of Shu's turn, Jordan casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Beseju as an additional cost and fetches up an Ancient Tomb onto the battlefield. Also in the end step, Ian activates Wirewood Symbiote, returning Elvish Mystic to his hand and untapping Selvala. He activates Selvala, revealing Allosaurus Shepherd, Mana Drain, Watery Grave, and Cavern of Souls. Ian adds 2 green and gains 2 life. Then everyone draws. Still in the end step, Jordan taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Beast Within, targeting Wirewood Symbiote. Chrome triggers and Shu draws. Wirewood Symbiote is destroyed and Ian creates a 3-3 Beast. After making sure that nobody else has another game action to perform, Shu passes to Jordan. Jordan draws and activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Zack. He casts a Mana Crypt. He plays a Stomping Ground into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Chrome triggers and Shu draws. Dockside enters and Jordan creates 5 treasures. He casts Teemer Sabertooth. In response, Shu taps his Spire of Industry and his Ancient Tomb to help flash in a Dress Down. It enters and Shu draws. With Dress Down stopping his combo, Jordan finishes up his turn. At the end of Jordan's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. Ian draws and then activates his Ranger Captain of Eos, sacrificing it, stopping his opponents from casting non-creature spells until the end of his turn. He plays a Gaia's Cradle. He casts Allosaur Shepherd. He activates Selvala, revealing Emil the Blessed, Fierce Guardianship, Demonic Consultation, and Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. He has 3 green and then gains 3 life. He casts Mirror Entity, Chrome Triggers, and Shu draws. He casts Weird Harvest, where X equals 1. Ian fetches up a Quirian Ranger, Zack fetches up a Dockside Extortionist, Shu fetches up a Thassa's Oracle, and then Jordan fetches up a Duskwatch Recruiter, all into their hands. Ian casts Quirion Ranger. He casts Elvish Mystic. He casts Finehorn Elves. He activates Mirror Entity, making all of his creatures 1-1s and then giving them all creature types until the end of turn. He then taps his Priest of Titania, adding 8 green. He activates Quirion Ranger, returning Temple Garden to his hand and untapping Salvala. He activates Salvala with players revealing Marsh Flats, Mystical Tutor, Cabal Ritual, and an Arbor Elf. Ian adds 3 green and gains 3 life. Then each player draws. He casts an Entwined Tooth and Nail. He fetches up a Shia Soul of the Wild and Stoneforge Mystic into his hand. He then puts a Shia Soul of the Wild and a Meal the Blast from his hand onto the battlefield. Unfortunately, unable to win from here and out of resources, he sends the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Jordan activates Teamer Sabertooth, returning Dockside Extortionist to his hand and giving it indestructible until the end of turn. Zack's Dockside enters, and in response, Zack taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Wishclaw Talisman. He fetches up a card into his hand and then gives Wishclaw to Shu. Dockside's ability resolves, and Zack creates 5 treasures. Zack taps his City of Brass to help cast Halden, Abbot Arcanist. He moves to combat and attacks Shu with Paco. Paco triggers, and everyone exiles Cyclonic Rift, Underground Sea, Destiny Spinner, and Cavern of Souls with fetch counters on them. Paco gets 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Shu takes the damage. In a second main phase, Zack cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Wild Growth, targeting his Tropical Island. He casts Capture of Jingxiao. In response, Ian activates Quirion Ranger, returning Elvish Mystic to his hand, attempting to untap Savala. In response, Zack casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, redirecting Quirion Ranger's ability to Paco. Paco untaps, Capture resolves, and Zack moves to his extra turn. Zack draws and casts Personal Tutor. He fetches up a Time Warp onto the top of his library. He plays Shu's Underground Sea through Halden. He moves to combat and attacks Shu with Paco. Paco triggers and everyone exiles Time Warp, Enlightened Tutor, Court of Calling, and Chrome Mox with fetch counters on them. Paco then gets 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Shu blocks with Dragon's Rage Channeler, killing it. In a second main phase, Zack taps his Ancient Tomb and his City of Brass to help cast Time Warp. Chrome triggers and Shu draws. In response, Ian activates Quirion Ranger, returning Elvish Mystic to his hand, targeting Selvala. In response, Zack casts Resculpt, targeting Selvala. Ian sends Selvala to the command zone and then creates a 4 4 elemental. Time Warp resolves and Zack passes the turn to, well, himself. During his upkeep, Zack casts Mystical Tutor. 
In response, Shu pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting Mystical Tutor. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Mental Misstep. Chrome triggers, and Shu draws. Misstep is countered, and Zack fetches up a Temporal Manipulation onto the top of his library. Zack draws and then moves to combat, attacking Shu with Paco. Paco triggers, with everyone exiling Exploration, Arid Mesa, Survival of the Fittest, and Wirewood Lodge with fetch counters on them. Paco gets four plus one plus one counters, and then Shu blocks with Krom, killing it. In his second main phase, Zack plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Exploration. He plays a Mystic Sanctuary untapped as his Exploration land for turn. It enters, and he puts Time Warp onto the top of his library. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Temporal Manipulation. He ships the turn to himself again. Zack draws and casts Time Warp, targeting himself, netting yet another extra turn. Zack moves to combat and swings Paco at Shu. Paco triggers, and everyone exiles Guy's Cradle, Silence, Elvish Spirit Guide, and Drum Bellower with fetch counters on them. Then Paco gets three plus one plus one counters. Shu takes lethal commander damage and dies. In his second main phase, Zack plays a Guy's Cradle. He casts Court of Calling, where X equals two. He fetches up a Gilded Drake onto the battlefield. It enters, and Zack targets a Shia. In response, Ian activates Quirion Ranger, returning Allosaur Shepherd to untap Priest of Titania. He activates a meal, flickering a Shia. With its original target gone, Gilded Drake is sacrificed. Next, Zack taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Intuition, targeting Jordan. He fetches up a Lightning Bolt, Underworld Breach, and a Winds of Rebuke. Jordan gives him Underworld Breach. Zack plays Savannah as his Exploration Land for turn. He follows it up with a Wirewood Lodge. Oops, this is actually an extra land drop, but that's okay. Magic is hard. He casts Underworld Breach. In response, Jordan evokes Endurance, exiling Arbor Elf. It enters, and Jordan targets Zack. Zack then puts his graveyard onto the bottom of his library in a random order, and Endurance is sacrificed. Then Underworld Breach resolves. Zack taps his City of Brass to help cast Survival of the Fittest. His win attempt has been stifled, well, Endurance, and he moves to his extra turn in hopes of finding a way out. At the end of Zack's turn, Underworld Breach is sacrificed. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks Jordan with Paco. Paco triggers and exiles Mana Vault, Soul Ring, and Carpet of Flowers with fetch counters on them. Paco gets three plus one plus one counters and Jordan blocks with Teamer Sabertooth, killing it. Finally through, Zack passes to Jordan. During his upkeep, Jordan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Carpet of Flowers. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Jordan creates four treasures. He plays Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth. He casts Dust Watch Recruiter. He moves to a second main phase and has three green through his carpet. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Karametra's Acolyte. He casts Sentinel of Wood Readers. He ends his turn. Ian draws and plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Stoneforge Mystic. It enters and he fetches up a Lightning Greaves into his hand. He casts Lightning Greaves. He activates Mirror Entity, making all of his creatures 4-4 and giving them all creature types until end of turn. He taps his Priest of Titania for eight green. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing Ranger to his hand through a Shia to untap Priest of Titania. He casts Quirion Ranger. Knowing this creates an infinite mana combo, Zack casts Mana Drain, countering Ranger. Next, Ian casts Allosaurus Shepherd. Ian activates a meal to flicker Stoneforge Mystic. It enters and he fetches up an Umbra Mental into his hand. He casts Umbra Mental. He equips it to Priest of Titania. He then demonstrates a loop of tapping Priest of Titania for mana and then untapping Priest with the Umbra Mental to create a huge amount of green mana. He casts Fauna Shaman. He equips Fauna Shaman with Lightning Greaves to give it haste. He activates Fauna Shaman, discarding Elvish Arch Druid, and fetches up an Avon Mind Sensor into his hand. He taps his Horizon Canopy to help cast Avon Mind Sensor. He equips Avon with Lightning Greaves and then activates Mirror Entity for... a lot. Now with an army of huge creatures, he moves to combat. He swings Avon Mind Sensor at Jordan and the rest at Zack. They all take it, and Ian wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a wild match. We saw win attempts from nearly all players this game, and it seemed like anybody could have won at any time. Congrats to Ian on his win. He used his commander to great effect and was victorious through multiple attempts to stop him. Seeing Selvala again, one of the original great commanders of CDH, was also awesome tonight. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we do get out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.